Hello class, it's Professor Streeter again, and I hope we get to talk this week about your second essay. Um, I don't expect you to have something worked out fully, but the goal this week is to try to come up with a topic. Right? The sort of first step is to brainstorm and think about what you want to write about. Um, so if you have questions about that, you can email me, but I want you to start by thinking about this on your own. You can send me uh, the proposal in the assignments folder by Friday. And during our virtual Google Meet class, if you have any questions about the essay, we can talk about them. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can send me a personal email and we can chat about it that way. Okay. Um, but tonight, I'm going to talk to you about all of the isms in chapter 15 and chapter 19 that we see from Schaefer Landau. I thought it might be useful to sort through monism, pluralism, absolutism, relativism. That's a lot of isms. Uh, so my goal is to try to sort some of those out for you a little bit. Again, I've got uh, some notes that I'll share with you. And um, on one side of the screen and on the other side, you've got me. I will send these notes to you and you can follow along that way. Okay, let's get started. Um, all of the theories that we've looked at so far are, uh, are monistic. So what is monism? An ethical monist is committed to the following claims. First, there is one supreme principle or standard on which all morality is based. And secondly, all other moral rules, for example, don't lie. All their secondary moral rules can be explained or justified in terms of this one fundamental principle. All of our moral responsibilities are compatible with this principle. Right? This principle uh, explains them all, and all of our moral responsibilities are compatible with this principle. Uh, the principle is supposed to give us a way of resolving potential conflicts between different moral responsibilities that we might have or between different values, different things that we value. Um, and finally, most importantly, um, the principle is absolute. There are no exceptions to the principle and no conditions under which the principle can be violated. Okay, so for example, we've looked at a lot of different ethical theories. They're all monistic. Right? They all are committed to the claims that I just uh, went through. So divine command theory, the supreme principle, always do what God commands. Right? That's an absolute principle, no exceptions. Uh, it's a basic. Right? All the other rules, don't lie, are explained in terms of that basic principle, do what God commands. Um, okay, natural law theory, different principle, but same monistic commitment, right? Um, always act in accordance with one's true or rational nature. Again, all of the secondary moral rules are explained in, or justified in terms of that one principle, which is itself absolute. There's no exceptions to that principle. Um, egoism is a moral theory. Um, always maximize one's own self-interest, right? You're never, you're never permitted to to go against that principle. And that explains you know, why we should do all sorts of other things, because there are ways of maximizing one's own self-interest. Doesn't really look like a moral theory, but you know, some people have defended egoism. Utilitarianism, we talked a lot about. Oh, again, it's a, it's a monistic account. Always maximize the greatest happiness for the greatest number. And Kantian, always act on universalizable maxims, right? These are examples of monistic theories. There's one principle, one basic principle on which everything else is based, and that principle is absolute. And even to some extent, the contractarian, it's a little bit, uh, a bit more complicated view. Um, some might argue it's not an absolutist theory, but I think we can read it that way, right? The principle is always act in accordance with rules that free and equal people would endorse for their mutual benefit. You never get to violate that principle. So in that sense, it's monistic and absolutist. Okay, so um, 
So if you, if, if you think that some or all of these theories capture sort of one aspect of morality, right? Uh, the utilitarian captures the sense in which we should minimize harm, uh, but the Kantian captures the sense in which um, we should act on maxims or you know, principles that we can justify to, to, our, to, to others, um, uh, that, that, you know, that we can universalize uh, 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 our, our principles, our policies. Um, maybe you think that each theory captures some aspect of morality, but none of them is fundamental. Right? Well, then perhaps you are drawn to something that you, uh, is called pluralism, this idea that there are more than one fundamental principle. There's not just one. Okay, so what is pluralism? Um, an ethical pluralist is committed to this claim, that there are at least two fundamental moral principles, and neither is more basic than the other. Right? There could be more than two principles, there could be three, there could be four, um, but the idea is that none of the principles is more basic or more fundamental than the others. They're all equally fundamental, right, <laughs> in some sense. Um, so there is no supreme principle on which all the others are based. Um, that's what the ethical pluralist is committed to. Right? Um, so, I mean, a pluralist could, going back up here, a pluralist could defend the Kantian principle, but also defend the utilitarian principle. And then the question becomes, well, how do you resolve them when they conflict? Um, but the, the, the pluralist would say that, you know, that the, that the utilitarian principle is no more basic than the Kantian principle and vice versa, right? Um, okay. Um, so, some pluralists are absolutists. They think um, there are many fundamental principles and they are all absolute. None of them can ever be violated, right? Um, and they, they will have to also say that none of them ever conflict. <laughs> right? There can't be conflict between the fundamental principles if none of them can ever be violated. Uh, but other pluralists reject absolutism. Right? They think that there are cases where the principles conflict, <laughs> and so we have to favor one over the other. Uh, so there are cases in which at least one basic moral principle can be violated. Um, okay. So let's think about this some more, like whether you are a monist or a pluralist, right? So there are pluralists who are absolutists. There are pluralists who are not absolutists. All monists are absolutists, but whether you are a monist or a pluralist who is an absolutist, is absolutism a plausible position? Right? Can we defend it? So I'm gonna pause there and we'll uh, start again in a moment.